What's up folks, it is Lawless Prince here with a complete all over print tutorial. This tutorial will cover building an all over print frame from scratch with wood and screen, coating the screen with emulsion, piecing together the transparencies, exposing the screen, printing with it, and then curing. You can build the screen by itself for under $100. Of course, exposing the screen is the really tricky part, but I'm gonna show you a couple of other cheap options to expose with, so you don't have to spend such a big amount on building an exposure unit. This tutorial becomes a lot more feasible and affordable once you've learned the basics of screen printing with regular size screens. You can use that experience and a lot of the materials you already have to scale up. You should 100% go into this tutorial having some experience with screen printing. My goal with this video is to help make all over print screen printing more accessible because I'd really love to see what other people are able to come up with. There's so many creative people out there and I want people to be able to try their hand at it. All right, here's a look at everything we're going to be using. This is everything except for what we're going to expose with. I'm going to give you all a few options. This is what I currently use when I built an actual huge exposure unit, but I also used to expose it under this with like lights that would hang down and I would put glass on top and you could actually get that glass from Home Depot. And I'm going to show you all that. So just stay tuned for that. And I'll go into detail more about each of these things as we get to each section. But um, of course we got two huge pieces of wood these are actually eight feet long, which is the perfect length because um, you can cut that into 42 and 48 inches for both of them and you'll have enough to make a whole frame. You got a staple gun, you got a drill, you got the screws. You want these screws to be long enough to where they go past the wood and about like an inch into the other one. Then we got some 110 mesh and this is big enough to where you can... Um, where you can do two or three of these and you can just kind of rip off the screen and staple another one on instead of reclaiming it. We've got Tex Blue. I like this emulsion just because it exposes really quick with LEDs because we're gonna be using actually Home Depot and Walmart LEDs. I've been using these actually for like the past three years and it's actually pretty reliable and nice. So I'm gonna show you how I do that. Um, but with this one, it, it only takes about 10 minutes to expose the LEDs, which is a super long time because most people, it, it might take like 30, 40 seconds. But um, I've just been using this method for a long time and it's super reliable. So we've got pitch black ink, um, not pictured here. I'm actually going to have an additive that um, lets it air dry. Uh, I think it's called like hyper drive or turbo drive or something like that. So I'll, I'll picture that here. And I'm gonna list all these materials in the description. I'm gonna have a whole list of them. So just go down there and I'll picture the listings in the video right here. And we've also got some tape. This tape is nasty. I'm gonna get some new tape, but. Here is me sawing the wood by hand. I chose to use a handsaw because it's the cheapest, but you can use whatever saw you want. The main thing is that you just want the ends to be nice and flat so that when you screw them together, there's not like a huge gap between them. Um, but that's really it. I'm just sawing these down. I saw two 42 inch pieces and two 48 inch pieces, and then we're gonna screw them together to make the screen. So here's a 2XL laying inside the frame. You could also probably do a 3X if you wanted to also. I've laid the wood out on the floor and now I'm gonna go around with a staple gun, putting a couple staples where the wood pieces meet. This will help hold together the wood when you pre-drill and then screw them together. You wanna make sure you do this process on a flat surface so the frame doesn't start warped. Here's a look at the staples. Then I come back with the drill and I pre-drill two holes and I put in two screws. You want the drill bit to be a good bit smaller than the screw so the teeth still get a good hold on the wood. All right, so after repeating that all the way around, you can see that the frame is like super sturdy. It doesn't really warp that much and it's pretty flat because I screwed it together while it was like on the ground really flat and it shouldn't warp, but if it ever does, just lay it on the ground and weigh it down and that'll help flatten it out. So now we're gonna grab the screen that we got from Amazon and we're gonna position it to where we still have a few inches of screen left to pull on the edges. Then we just grab the scissors and cut the piece that we're going to use. 
Now we grab the staple gun and we go on one side all the way down. I then go to the other side and then I use my hand to tension the mesh and then I use the staple gun to hold this tension and I just repeat that all the way down. And as you can see, the screen just gets tighter and tighter on each side that I go and staple. I then repeat this on the last two sides. When you're building a wood frame like this without a tensioner, it's never going to be perfect. But the two most important things is that the screen doesn't sag or sway when you move it and that it's secured with enough staples. If you've got these two things, then the screen usually works great and holds up pretty good. All right, so now I'm going to show you how to do all of the work in Photoshop. And then after that, I'm going to show you how to piece together the transparencies. As you can see, the image we've got here is pretty low quality, but I'm going to show you how to scale it up and then threshold it, which will let you get super sharp edges. After we open the image we're going to use, we're just going to crop out anything we don't want. And you want the shape to be slightly wider than it is tall. It's just slightly wider than a square. And then after that, we're gonna to go to image size and we're gonna change the image size to 42 inches wide by 36 inches tall. And we're gonna change it to 300 pixels per inch. This is gonna make the quality a whole lot better. So when we go to threshold it, the image is gonna look a lot nicer. So then after you scale it up, you just go and threshold it and then the image is ready to use. As you can see, it's really, really sharp and it's perfect for what we're gonna use it for, which is an all over print all over the whole shirt. Now that we've got the image ready to print, we're gonna go ahead and select a corner piece. And we're gonna select a piece that's larger than 13 by 19. And we're gonna paste it into a 13 by 19 document just to make sure we can print as much as we can. Also, make sure that the print file and the image file have the same pixels per inch so the image stays the same size. Here it is after it's printed out. You can put it on a 2XL just to get an idea of the size. And as you can see, it's super clean and has sharp edges. I'm going to use the edge of his leg right here as a place to start the selection for the next transparency to print. And then I just repeat this with the other pieces. There's four main pieces and then I use a fifth piece to fill in the gaps. If you're selecting a piece that touches on both sides, just make sure that you leave enough overlap on both sides. Here is me piecing together the first two transparencies. You want to have the rough side down so that we can use tape on the smooth side and not damage the transparencies. I start by lining them up the best I can from top to bottom and then placing a single piece of tape to secure it at the top. And then I grab my scissors and I trim off the excess of the top transparency up into the tape. Then I line it up again and I use a piece of tape at the bottom where I've already trimmed. And then I take the first piece of tape off trim off that last little piece and then put a piece back on so that way it's fully secured now and you can add a third piece in the middle now if you'd like then i flip it over and trim the bottom piece of transparency making sure to leave a tiny bit of overlap don't add any tape to this side Here's me adding the other two pieces. You can see that it's the exact same process, tape and trim up the top and then trim the bottom. And here it is complete after adding a fifth piece to fill in the gaps. You can see that this covers an entire 2XL with only five 13 by 19 transparencies. Here it is after I brought it to the exposure unit downstairs. Even though I picked it up and moved it, it still overlaps perfectly if you secured enough with the tape. Here's the printer I use. It's a Pixma IX6820. It's a really, really good printer. It was only $200. It prints 13 by 19. It's got two different black cartridges, so it prints really clean. Uh, pretty dark too. I mean, not the darkest in the world, but you know. So now let's move on to coating the screen. At first, I tried to coat it with a squeegee to try to make it a little bit simpler for y'all, but I just couldn't get that to work right. So I ended up just having to use a scoop coat. I do a pass with the scoop coat leaning forward, adding emulsion to the front, and then I repeat this on the back. Apply lots of pressure since the tension will be looser than a regular frame. And then I come back and I do a dry scoop to pick up as much extra emulsion as I can. You really want the emulsion to be as thin as possible. This will help a lot with exposing and when you're rinsing out the screen.
All right, so I'm downstairs now. So let's talk about exposing. There is three different options for exposing all over prints. Now this is the first one. I got this huge piece of glass off of Facebook Marketplace for like 120 bucks. Then I built this frame for it and I put legs on it and it's what I use to expose now. But I'm also gonna post a clip right after this where I show you the old method I use, which is a lot cheaper and you don't need this huge piece of glass and you can get glass from Home Depot and do it. So stay tuned for that. Then there's also a third option where you can use a regular size exposure unit. Like let's say you have one that's 40 inches wide. You can expose half the screen, then you can rotate the screen around and expose the other half of the screen, which I've actually done before. Here's a picture of it. And um, just think about that whenever you go to expose this because exposing is easily the hardest part and it's really complicated. Um, but if you have experience with it already and you can kind of scale up and use the method you already have, it should make it a lot easier. So just keep that in mind. And here's the clip. So here's me preparing the screen. I place the transparency on top. Um, I grab a slightly smaller screen and put a black shirt on top of it and I put it under the screen. What this does is it stops the middle of the screen from drooping down, but you want to make sure you level the screen, which is what I'm doing right now. I just got like little pieces of sandpaper and folded them over. You want the bigger screen to be like almost even with the screen that you put under it. So that way it, it doesn't droop on the middle and it doesn't droop towards the edges and the glass will be totally contacted from the start to the finish. So here's a look at it after I turn the lights on and I start. It should be perfect contact all the way around. The glass should be flat against the transparency and the transparency should be flat against the emulsion and the screen. And that's how you know you'll get a good exposure. And there's a little bit of leeway. I mean, it doesn't have to be perfect, but you don't want any shadows anywhere. So now after the screen dries, I take it over to the exposure unit. It doesn't sit perfectly flat against the glass, so I use two clamps to make sure that it's totally even. This is one of the most important things about exposing. Make sure that the glass is flush with your frame. This way the mesh is as close as possible to the glass and makes it easier to expose. Now I've got some black flat door mats and I'm using these to hold the screen against the glass. Then I put some extra weight on top just to make sure the screen stays secured. Here's what it looks like. As you can see, the frame is flat against the glass, which is really important for these exposures. And here's how I've got the LEDs positioned. As you can see, I've got totally even coverage on one half. I let this half expose for 17 minutes, and then I move the LEDs to the other half and expose that half for another 17 minutes. And then when it's done exposing, I take off all the weight and the mats and go take it to wash it out. I wash out both sides of the screen thoroughly, and if there's any spots that are a little tough to get out, I use the soft side of the sponge and gently rub it to get it out. If you wash out the screen and there's places where the transparency overlap washes out, you need to expose longer. And if you can't get anything to wash out, it's either overexposed or the transparency isn't making good contact with the screen. But after washing it out, if you got a good exposure, it'll look like this. As you can see, you can't even tell where the transparencies were pieced together. So now that we've got the screen ready and it's dry, it's time to come back and print with it. I want to show you that you don't really need a huge press. So in this video, I'm just going to be printing on a garage floor. But you could also do this on hardwood floors as long as the floors are even. And all you need is a towel and some water to clean up with water-based ink so it's not a huge mess. It's really important to keep the edges clean on these huge screens, so I use some painter's tape so there's not as much mess. Then I position the screen upside down leaning against the wall like this. We're going to put a piece of tape down to mark where the screen will pivot. Then I add a piece to mark the center of the screen. And then I put a piece on the floor where we want the center of the shirt. And this will match up with the center of the screen. Then we grab our shirt and we position it where we want it to land on the screen. You can see that it wasn't high enough at first so I went ahead and just moved it up a little bit. And then once we're happy with how it lands, we're going to use tape to mark the top of the shirt. Now once we've marked everything, we know where to place the shirt and where to place the screen. Once we've got everything situated, we're gonna go and grab the ink and spread some across the top of the screen. 
After this, I kneel at the bottom of the frame and pin the frame against my knees to keep it from moving the best I can. Of course, it's still going to move a little bit and there might be a few smears, but this method is still pretty consistent. Then I use the squeegee and do complete passes from the top to bottom, doing about two passes total on the entire shirt. With this water-based ink, it's actually really easy to get a good print. I use a super soft 14-inch squeegee and it works great on the seams, because if you try to use a huge squeegee on this, it's just going to be really hard to get good contact with the whole shirt. And after we let it dry for a day or two, this is the result. Around the edges, it can be a little bit messy and the low tension caused a couple creases, but it still looks really, really clean. And since we used the warp drive additive in the water-based ink, you're all good to go ahead and wash it now, so you don't need an oven to cure it. I really hope this tutorial is able to help if you've been thinking about doing all over prints. I know this whole process is pretty complicated, but if you're determined and not afraid to make a couple mistakes, it can be really rewarding and fun too. If you're still here, go ahead and drop a follow and a like if you haven't already to see more content. Thank y'all so much. I'll see y'all soon.